All right, welcome back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the proof for Fermat's theorem. Okay, so pay attention um, and uh, follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is remember those two things that were the if part, okay, or given. So we're going to assume those things. So suppose, so first of all, so we're going to suppose that f has a local extremum and f is differentiable. Okay? So suppose f has a local extremum at C and F prime of C oh hold on didn't have myself nope and F is differentiable. Okay, so there, there's the two conditions. So now what we need to show is that F prime of C is zero, right? That's what Fermat's theorem is saying is, hey, if we have a function that has a local extremum at C, um, and C is in the domain of the function, and f is differentiable, right? Then f prime of c is equal to zero. So that's what we need to show. Okay. Okay, so to do this, uh, we're going to show that f prime of c is greater than or equal to zero, and f prime of c is less than or equal to zero. Right? So think about that. If we could show that f prime of zero is less than or equal to zero and f, excuse me, let me rephrase that. If we can show that f of c, f prime of c is less than or equal to zero and we show that f prime of c is greater than or equal to zero, then that would mean that f of c would have to equal zero, right? Okay, that's the only way it could be both greater than and greater than or equal to or less than any, uh, and less than or equal to. Zero. Okay. So anyway, so that's that's what we're going to do. Okay. So let's do it. Okay. Now, since f has a local extrema at C, Okay, f has a local maximum or a local uh, minimum at C, right? That's what it means to, that's by definition of a local extremum, right? So since f has a local extremum at C, um, f has either a local maximum or a local minimum. Let's see. Okay. Now, the case in which F is a local minimum at C can be handled similarly. So, but we're, we're going to suppose um, let's suppose that F has a local maximum. Okay. Suppose F has a Uh, local maximum. 
We could do local minimum, and local minimum, like I said, can be handled similarly, but let's just assume it has, it's a local maximum. Okay? Okay, so if it's a local maximum, then guess what? That means there exists an open interval. Right? By definition, right? There exists an open interval containing C such that um, such that the, um, the interval is contained in the domain, right? Again, just using the, the definition. And that what? On this open interval, um, f, yeah, f of c, is um, greater than or equal to, oh, yeah, 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 f of x for all x, oops, I'm using my symbols, for all x, um, but, I mean, you know what, I'm going to put i here, i. Does an open interval i contain c such that f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in i? Okay. Now, since f is differentiable at c, okay, now we're going to use the other. So here, since f is differentiable at c, we know We know what? That we can take the limit, right? The derivative. Okay, so uh, let me rewrite this. Differentiable at C from the from the definition defin of derivative we know what that F prime of C is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, or x approaches c, of what? Uh, f of c, uh, f of x minus f of c over x minus c, 
Okay, so that's from the definition of derivative. Okay, and since the limit exists, both one-sided limits also exist and equals f prime of c, right? Okay, so let's, so since the limit exists, oh, excuse me, right? Since the limit exists, then we know that, remember, the one-sided limits must be the same. So since we know the limits exist, the one limit, the one-sided limits, the one, so the, from the right and from the left, the one-sided limits exist, and equal f prime of c, right? They have to be the same, okay? So therefore, what do we know? Well, therefore, well, by definition of the one-sided limits, right? So therefore, we have C is equal to the limit as X approaches C from the right of F of X minus F of C over X minus C and F prime of C is equal to the limit as X approaches C from the left of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. So that's just following from what I just wrote. Since the limit exists, the one side limits exist and equal f prime of c. So therefore, we know this is equal to this and this is equal to this. So just the definition of the right and uh, left limits. Okay. Now, since f of c is a local maximum, we see that f of x minus f of c is less than or equal to zero for x near c. Right? So notice here, since f of c is a local maximum, right? So if, look, if f of c is a local maximum, then we know that for x close to c, this is going to be negative. This is going to be negative, right? This is going to be negative. Okay? So that's going to be important. Okay, so let's write that down.
Okay, so, okay, so there's, there's that, right? So what does that give us? Well, what if we have, what if we have X is near C, right? What if X is near C, but let's say X is greater than C. Well, that means this is, the top is going to be negative and the bottom is going to be positive. Right? Which means that the quotient is going to be negative or zero. Okay, so that means, um, so let's write, so therefore, okay, for x that's close to c, and x greater than c, f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c is going to be greater than or equal to zero, right? And so we conclude f prime of c is less than or equal to zero. Now similarly, it can be shown that f prime of c is greater than or equal to zero. Right? Because all we have to do is say, hey, what if x is less than c? If x is less than c, then we get a negative on top and a negative on the bottom, and we get the opposite. We get greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so similarly, it can be shown f of c is greater than or equal to zero. And so therefore, f prime of c is equal to zero. And that's the end of the proof. So now, from, from Mahler's theorem, what we can conclude is that if f has a local extremum at c, then either f prime of c is equal to zero, or f prime of c is undefined. In other words, local extrema can only occur at critical points. That's the result, okay? Fermat's theorem basically says that um, local extrema can only happen at critical points, and that's what we're going to use. Have a great day.